Year 10 and 11, welcome to your English Literature Revision for the poem Exposure by Wilfred Owen. As always, we will look at the meaning of the poem, the structural devices used by the poet, and the language devices used by the poet. In advance of this revision, um, it will help you to have already read the poem, because obviously it's, it's so long and it'll take time and, and you don't want me reading it to you. Um, so obviously, when we look at exposure, we must be, first of all, looking at the title of the poem and what that adds to uh, the meaning. So the title, Exposure, then, has a double meaning. Um, when we think of uh, war poem, naturally we assume that the danger to the soldiers would be the enemy. And um, The interesting thing that Wilfred Owen does here is that the men actually are um, vulnerable to the weather. So in the title, Exposure, we see that the men are exposed to the cold weather and actually it is the cold weather that is killing them. In addition to that, though, the men are exposed mentally and they suffer Men mentally in terms of what they think and the fact that they almost have to accept that they are sitting waiting to die. Okay, the first straightforward structural device that Wilfred Owen uses is he uses eight regular stanzas. As you can see, they all look the same and they are all of the same length. Um, these eight regular stanzas are used to highlight the monotony and the tedium of life in the trenches. Remember what I said just before, the fact that they are sitting and they're just waiting um, either for the, you know, for the enemy to attack or, or f obviously for themselves to, to take action. And as they're sitting, they are, are bored. And as we discussed from the title, they are exposed to the cold. They are exposed mentally. And we see that through this, the, the eight regular stanzas and the drawn out poem that the suffering is continuous. Uh, the next structural device Wilfred Owen uses is this near rhyme slash half rhyme scheme. Um, it is used throughout the poem, if you look at what I've highlighted there. The first the first line we've got uh, us, and then you've got nervous. So it's not a whole rhyme, It's it, as I say, it's a near rhyme, it's a half rhyme. Silent and salient, again, rhyme at the end. Brambles, rumbles, rhyme at the end. If you go through the poem, there's many more. Um, and as I say... And as it says on the screen there, these near rhymes and half rhymes are used and it makes the poem sound ugly and, and, and rougher because he, Wilfred Owen is trying to express to us the reality of war and he makes the poem uncomfortable for the reader and that includes his rhyme scheme. Okay, I would argue as well that this half rhyme, near rhyme gives a tight um, feel to the poem in terms of adding a sombre, serious uh, tone. Obviously, it forces the reader throughout the poem to um, sympathise with the soldiers, it, but it doesn't matter how much we try, we literally can't feel what they feel or we can't um, understand um, how extreme it is to sit and wait and die. Okay. And your last thing for structure is, if you read the poem uh, carefully through, each stanza shows us that as the poem progresses, the men's suffering worsens. And actually, Wilfred Owen cleverly shows us this um, in the last line of every stanza. It's stanza one, but nothing happens. That is the soldiers realising that they're just waiting for something, something to happen. They are bored. Which changes to what are we doing here? Now, there's a real confusion in that rhetorical question because it's almost like they don't know why they're fighting. They don't know what they have been sent there for, what they are doing, which once again almost shocks the reader, as you know, as we would like to think that our soldiers understand why they uh, are at war. That goes to but nothing happens. So again, you know, they're waiting, almost waiting for the enemy to attack, but they're not, so they're, so they're waiting, unaware that they're dying at this point in time. By the time we get the stanza forward, again, it's the same, nothing happens because he's describing the snow. Again, the soldiers are unaware that the snow and the cold is killing them. Stanza five takes a turn here and the, the last line is, is it that we are dying? So the rhetorical question of what, what are we doing here has almost been answered in stanza five. Is it that we are dying? It's rhetorical because they are dying and stanza five is almost the acceptance by Wilfred Owen and the other soldiers of death. They know that that is 
um, inevitably the end, or, or it, it's going to be the conclusion of this war for them. Stanza six. He's lost all hope by stanza six. We turn back to our dying. We turn back to our dying. So they've got nothing else to do except die. So they have it's almost like the soldiers have accepted it. So they give in. And for the love of God seems dying in stanza seven. So not only have they given up hope, but they've also given up religiously. Um, if they thought anybody was going to help them, they weren't. If they, you know, think, oh, if we pray to God, 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 shoot, shoot to save us. No, as we see here, God, God can't help them either. And then the last line of the poem sums up the whole poem, really. But nothing happens. There's an irony when that is used on line 40, because the irony is that they are dying. Not, nothing happens when the men are dying. It's got an irony in there, a very harsh irony. That, again, it's the implication that they don't realise that the weather is killing them. And just out of interest, and as an aside, Wilfred Owen was going to call the poem Nothing Happens, and obviously he's, he changed his mind to exposure. Um, it would have been fitting had the poem been Nothing Happens, um, but, uh, as I said at the beginning, the title Exposure has more implications um, it shows us that they are exposed to the elements of the weather and imminent danger and insanity. Um, okay.